Hello and welcome. My name is Neil Hambly. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer and this is Dataplus Train. We are looking at the DA100 certification and this is episode one. So now we're going to look at the prepare the data. The first thing here, we're going to start with get data. This is ingesting data into the Power BI, being able to perform transformations and ensuring that the data is prepared well enough for the visualizations that are going to follow. We're now going to switch over to Power BI and perform some get data operations. So we are starting with a blank Power BI file. We're going to ingest some data from an Excel file. And we're going to bring that data in and look at that data first before we load that into the Power BI model. To get started with that, we go to the get data pane and we click on this link to the very left hand side of the data ribbon. From there, we can then choose the data source of our choice. In this case, we're going to be using Excel, but there are a lot more. We're going to explore that in a few seconds. And we're going to then bring that data in and go into the Power Query Editor, the PQE, and perform some transformations on the data, review the data, look at its quality, look at the values that we have inside of the different columns before we load that into our Power BI model. So let's get started with that. We're going to click on the Get Data dropdown. Here we can see there's a large list of kind of common sources, but we're going to go to the section at the bottom, which is how we're going to be able to click into there and find a full list of all the available current and preview connectors that we have available right now. This is the August release 2020 of the Power BI desktop. I click on more. And I then get a dialogue that comes up that shows me the different categorizations of the Power BI in things like all file database, power platform, Azure, online services, and other, which encompasses all the other connectors that doesn't fit into one of those other categories. You can see we have started with Excel, then text CSV, XML, a lot of the common, most common type of connectors being used. Going down, we've got folders, PDF, we've got SQL Server databases, and the list keeps going on and on. Let's go have a look at scroll very quickly. And we look down, we can see Azure SQL database, bunch of Azure services like Cosmos DB, Blob Storage, HD, HD Insight, and more. But for now, we're going to start with our very first one being the most common XL connector. Click on that and click on Connect. And this then opens up a dialogue to say which file, what's the location of that file. So I'm going to start with the financial sample that I have. This is available from the Microsoft Learn modules. I'll have details of those in our descriptions. I then get another dialogue come up to ask me what it is I'm looking for. Now, at the moment, this is a very small file, so it's just got one defined range called financials and one sheet one. I'm going to just check box the financials one, and I do end up with a preview as well, which I can have a quick look at, kind of just make sure it's the right data set. It is. Before I click load, I'm going to go transform data. This is going to take me into the Power Query editor section first that allows me now to perform additional analysis, transformations, and build up the steps that I might want to do. I might want to remove columns or certain rows, remove errors or change values. Right now, I can see that I've got a list of column names, segment, country, product, etc. And I also have underneath that directly, I have some information about that. I'm going to go to the view pane. I'm going to make sure that you're aware that we have these column quality column distribution and column profile sections, and we can checkbox those on and off, and that will allow us to see information about that column. So I've taken them all off. I'm gonna choose the quality one first. That tells me if I have any errors or empty values. Looking across, most of these look like they're good, and that's not surprising to Excel, but you may find in other connectors, you may find errors or even missing values. Let's look at the column distribution. This tells me kind of how many different distinct values, how many unique, and I, I've got a kind of description now, a kind of visual indication. I'm happy that we have everything there. If you look also to the very left of the columns, you'll see that there's a value either like 1.2 or 123, or there's a, a kind of other values like ABC. These are to tell you what the different data types are. So if I click on one of those entries there, and I'm just gonna do unit sold, and you can see that we have a listing of decimal, in this case, that's the one that's chosen, whole number, percentage, date, date, time, time zone, duration, text, etc. I get to choose what it is that I'm going to define that column to be. Now, 
generally from someone like Excel or database, it should be fairly well um, detailed. But if you're coming from other sources, you may find that those first 200 rows that get evaluated may not have the right evaluation, or you may want to change that to be a different one to suit your requirements. So I'm going to just change uh, this one here just to show you that I can do a change to, say, as a number to a whole number. And it's going to ask me whether I want to do this as replace current, either in line or add new step. I'm going to do the add new step option. And notice what's happened is also added an additional step now into our applied steps. If I want to remove that and put it back to what it before, I could obviously go double click into that and I could see um, what that step is. But I'm going to want to, in this case, I want to maybe change the name of the step. Or in this case, I just want to remove the step. I'm just going to go and click the X to the left of that. And now it's reverted back. I also have the ability in the home page to go to the advanced editor. And I could also see the change type that we have currently. You can see kind of what the different types. So, you know, it's, it's kind of defining what those are. I could just go in and actually make the change for, the t for that right there and then as well. So it's an option for me to make that change here and there. Cancel on that. When I'm ready, I want to load this data into the Power BI model. Currently, it's in the transformation stage. It hasn't been loaded yet. I'm just going to click on close and apply in the menu bar. And that's then going to load and apply those query changes. And we now have a table loaded that has 700 rows. This is the canvas. Nothing to see there at the moment. I'm going to the data pane. And you see we have our 700 rows in the financials table. So bottom left of the screen now. If I want to then go and make changes to the data types here, I could choose the column or a new right click. And I could go and kind of make changes in terms of the data type here on the menu bar here. Now we would recommend that you make these changes in the Power Query Editor before you load it. Reason being is going to perform it more efficiently there and there's going to be other performance impacts later on to change in data types, especially on very large tables if relationships have already been applied as well. So right now, that was all we wanted to do with that one. I can also add additional columns and do additional work on side of this table um, or query later on. And maybe in this case, I want to just say add a value of one. And now I've got the value one all the way down. So I might be doing a calculation or a measure later on as well inside of this table. But right now, we've just done a quick load of that Excel file into the Power BI. Let's go and change the source. Let's go and say, where does the file now reside? It's maybe moved. We may have a new folder we want to reside from. So there's a couple of ways of doing that. Now, the first and easiest way is to go to the home page, go to the Transform data, go to data source settings, and here we can see that we have the entry there for the path. I can click on the change data source at the bottom of the screen there, and it's then going to prompt me for where that location is. I'm just going to browse the same folder, and I'm going to click the same file, but essentially I could be choosing a different folder here. Once I'm OK, I can click uh, OK there, close, and that essentially would potentially reprocess that file and reload that. Let's say it's in a different location and it's been updated. Could be that you have a new file every month and you've got it in a different folder. You might want to change the data source each month. There's other strategies for this as well. And we can always go into the transform data, go to the Power Query Editor Advanced Editor Mode, and we get to choose maybe changing the path that we have for the file in the original place. So that's another option for us to go and kind of just make a change in the original path and reload the file and off we would go. So click done. I'll click close and apply. There has been no changes, but I'm just going to let that do that. So that is the end of this demo and we will see you in the next section.